A storage tank is a device that contains liquids or compressed gases for different aims. A container can hold the fluid for short or long terms and in hot or cold thermal conditions. In this project, a square-shaped storage tank is modeled and the water is in a 300 Kelvin condition while there are two inlets below the tank with different temperatures to control the outlet temperature located above the tank. Two inlets mix and their temperature and velocity affect each other. First, drag and drop a flown case in the blank window of project schematic. Then open ANSYS design modeler. We want to draw a two-dimensional square in XY plane, so click on Z axis to normalize on XY plane. Then uh, click on XY plane from the tree outline and select the sketch. From a sketching tab, select a rectangle. Start from a point on in axis and release the mouse to draw a rectangle. Now to enter accurate uh, values of height and width from dimensions tab, select semi automatic. So the software automatically detects the required values, the height, the width, and the distance between right wall of the tank to the y-axis. The height and width is 2 meter and the other one become 1. Now I want to make a surface out of this sketch. So after click on generate from concept tab, select surfaces from the sketches. Then select the sketch and apply and generate. Now I have to split the edge, the top of the tank to define outlet. The outlet distance from right and left side of the tank is 0.85 so from concept tab select split edges now select the top wall and apply it the definition type should be split by n the distance from the wall is 0.85 so enter the value for sigma after generation, the edge divided in two parts. The remaining part of the edge should be split by 0.3 meter. So from concept tab, again, split the edge with the new value. Repeat this action several times to define inlets at the bottom of the tank. The width of them are 0.2, so the values are different. Open ANSYS meshing software by double clicking on mesh. The geometry is a simple square, so there is no need to a complex mesh. Now open mesh setting and enter the element size at 0.02 or in other words 2 to 10 power minus 2. Then click on generate button.
the number of elements shown in a statistics part. If I scroll down and expand the statistics, I can see that about 10,000 elements were generated. The quality of the generated mesh can be checked in mesh metrics located in quality tab. The graph shows that the aspect ratio is about 1, so the mesh grid is acceptable. As the last step in ANSYS meshing, we need to define the boundary conditions by selecting them. Then right click and create name selection. This process should be applied on all boundary conditions, including inlet hot flow, inlet cold flow, walls, and the surface, which is called as tank storage zone. There are several assumptions that need to be considered in this simulation. First, we use pressure-based solver type because we are dealing with an incompressible fluid. Next, we want to simulate in a steady-state condition, which means uh, the variables like velocity and pressure may differ from point to point but do not change with time. And also, we ignore the gravitational effects, so just left the gravity option unchecked. For the next step, expand the model section and double click on energy. Since we want to see the temperature distribution at last, we need to enable energy equation. So the solver will solve energy equation as well as the flow equations. Then click on viscous bottom. In the appeared window, choose K omega SSD model to solve our turbulent fluid equations. The SSD K Omega Turbulence model is a two equation eddy viscosity model which has become very popular. SSD or the shear stress transport formulation combines the best of two worlds. It uses K Omega formulation in the inner parts of the bundle layer and switches to K Epsilon behavior in the free stream and thereby avoid the common K Omega problems. By enabling corner flow correction, the software Consider the secondary flows found in rectangular channels or non-circular cross-section geometries in the plane normal to the main flow direction into the corner along the bisector. In the next step, we should define the working fluid material. So after expanding materials tab, right click on fluid and select new. In the appeared window, we've got two ways to define the fluid. First way is to enter the properties of the fluid manually and the second way is to use fluent database. In this simulation our working fluid is water liquid so we prefer to use fluent database instead of entering the values manually. So open fluent database, scroll down to find the desired fluid and copy that. After that, we need to apply the fluid on our fluid domain. So from cell zone condition part, open tank storage zone. Define water liquid for material name and apply that. Next, we should define boundary conditions. Change the view to the zone type to have a better list of boundary conditions. The first boundary condition is inlet cold flow, 
If I select that and click on the edit button, the settings window pops up. The type of this boundary is velocity inlet, so we need to define a velocity magnitude, which is 2 meters per second here. The turbulence intensity is 5 and the hydraulic diameter equals 0.2 meters, which is the width of inlet area. In thermal tab, we have to enter the temperature of fluid. It's 293.15 Kelvin. The second boundary condition is just the same as first one, but with different temperature. So the velocity magnitude is 2 meters per second, turbulence intensity is 5, and hydraulic diameter is 0 0.2. Just change the temperature to 313.15 Kelvin. There is just a single outlet and the type is pressure outlet. The most important parameter is gauge pressure, which is zero. It means that fluid leaves the domain to the atmosphere. Although there isn't any backflow in this simulation, we define backflow turbulence intensity and hydraulic diameter. Do the same thing in thermal tab for backflow total temperature, which means if there is any backflow, its temperature is 300 Kelvin. Finally, the last boundary condition is wall. If I open the settings window, you can see that it's a stationary wall with no slip shear condition. In thermal tab, I consider a convection thermal condition and the heat transfer coefficient is 5 and also the free stream temperature is equal to 297.15 Kelvin. It means that the storage tank is located in a standard temperature room. The first step in solution part is to define pressure velocity coupling scheme. ANSYS Fluent offers us four different schemes, but we prefer to use simple scheme here. The pressure-based solver allows you to solve your flow problem in either a segregated or coupled manner. The simple algorithm uses a relationship between velocity and pressure correction to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. Moreover, we use second-order offwind for a special discretization for its higher accuracy. To check the convergence of the solution, we almost always check the residual values, which will be discussed later, but it can be a trustable criterion. So we define a parameter to monitor in each iteration from report definitions part. So when it gets to a constant value, we can be assured of the convergence. In this simulation, the outlet temperature can be a trustable and essential parameter to check on. So right click on report definitions part, follow as new surface report area weighted average. In appeared window, you can select the name and then choose the field variable which is temperature here. And then select the outlet surface. Now let's get back to residuals. After each iteration, the solver records the values. So the reported value in the console part represent the differences between two consecutive iterations. If the values get below this absolute criterion we define in this window, the calculations will stop. At last, before we start the calculation, we need to set initial values from initialization part. Choose a standard initialization and compute from inlet hot flow so the initial values get from inlet. Open run calculations part and enter thousand number of iterations. For post processing, in order to create a contour vector path line in ANSYS Fluent, we should use graphic section in results part. 
For example, to make a contour here, double click on contour section. In the appeared window, we've got two main options. First, to select the desired variable from contours of field, and then select the surface, which means the surface that we want to create the contour on. As you can see, the contour of velocity on the tank storage zone is shown. Now, change the variable to temperature to see the temperature distribution from the inlet to the outlet. Simply, I can change the variable to pressure to have pressure distribution. Another option in Ansys Fluent for post-processing is to create vectors. The settings are just like contours window. We should define the variable and set faces. At the end of the solution process, two-dimensional contours and vectors related to water pressure, temperature, turbulent kinetic energy and velocity are obtained. Water flow enters the domain from the inlets and moves to the outlet with higher speed. As can be seen in the pictures, both flows tend to central outlet direction and mix, so it affects their temperature and velocity. Also, fluid enters the channel in a high pressure value and leaves it with gauge pressure equal to zero.